Right now, if you look at the seven-day rolling average, we are seeing on average 575 new cases each day in the state of Oklahoma. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that shows up in the data is that uh, the number of tests that are being run where the result of the test is positive for COVID-19 has gone up dramatically. Um, at our lowest level on the week of May 25th, only 1.8% of all tests were positive. Uh, this past week, uh, so far for this week's data, 9.7% uh, of every specimen tested was positive for COVID-19. This past week, we saw uh, a substantial increase in the number of new, new cases that are happening uh, in people that are 65 years of age and older. So it started around the, the last week of June, and there's been a slow but steady increase in the number of patients who are 65 and older who are now being tested that are testing positive for COVID-19, which is exactly what we were concerned would happen. If you have a lot of young people who are testing positive that are mobile and social, that eventually they will interact with older people and the older people now are starting to show up as new cases. Part of my argument that, that you know, we need to put a greater focus on the physical distancing, social uh, distancing, uh, the mitigation strategies, wearing masks in public, because if we don't, uh, we um, could fill up the hospitals with COVID patients. As I highlight, it's, it's not an acceptable reason not to do more around mitigation because we have some hospital beds that are open. I think all of us pretty much agree right now, until we have a vaccine, until we have a vaccine that works, that can be broadly applied, uh, we're going to be stuck with all of these mitigating uh, interventions like wearing masks and physical distancing to slow the spread of the virus because right now it seems to be spreading relatively unchecked through our population, particularly younger people. Um, and uh, in the absence of a vaccine, wearing a mask and, and other um, uh, of uh, these public health interventions are about the only thing we can do to slow down transmission. What happens in the fall when we have both flu and COVID potentially, and so everybody's worried that that's the second surge or the second wave that everybody really worries about. Will we see really sharp increases in the number of cases in December, January, February, the typical months where you would see surges of the flu? Uh, and again, because this is a novel virus, we don't know what's going to happen. So we're going to be strongly encouraging everybody to get a flu shot this year uh, to at least try to prevent that one illness. The second thing is, you're absolutely right that wearing a mask, if you look at most of the research that's been done in the past looking at the use of masks or face shields, other things to prevent spread of respiratory viruses, most of it was done for influenza. So the, the things that we're doing now, wearing masks, maintaining physical distancing, hand hygiene, should help us slow down the spread of influenza this year also.